Mickey Mouse chase, everybody. Brian, I haven't even started the video. You don't have to Mickey Mouse chase me, okay? It's Mickey Mouse chase, everybody. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> this is your regularly speaking chase on two wheels here to talk about the build stream. For, this is, damn it. I just, all <laughs> like, oh, the it. damn it. it. What's going on, everybody? Chase on two wheels here. Behind me is a CBR 600 double R. And today we are not going to hit chase anymore with a rubber foot. We are going to talk about the build plans for this motorcycle because we're going to build it into a street bike and then we're going to transform it like a transformer uh, <laughs> into a track bike. But we are only able to do that because of our beautiful people over on Patreon. If you want to be one of our first, why did you, you changed it to eight? We have more patrons than eight, I promise. <laughs> We're on our way to get the first thousand patrons. So if you guys want to potentially win the motorcycles, we rebuild them, turn them into dream bikes, and then we give them away to our beautiful people over on Patreon. So we would love it if you guys went and checked it out and helped us support the show so we can continue making it, so we can continue making this content for you guys here on YouTube. So, um... We got a big ass list of shit to talk about to make this thing street worthy and then track worthy. I think we should start with the rear since Brian started with the front before my arm falls off. Alrighty guys, uh, we got a Really effed up motorcycle here. If you guys don't know, this CBR 600, 40,000 miles, it's an 08, and it was low-sided. You guys know, we, we don't keep exhausts on. Definitely gonna be changing out the exhaust. Um, check out the rear rotor. This dude, this dude is not going to live any much longer here in this garage. Definitely gonna be changing this guy out. We were just having an interesting conversation about wheels, because we think we're gonna keep the same wheels, but we're gonna get different tires. But if we're going to have this bike be track and street, me and Brian were talking about, do we have two sets of wheels, like a track wheel and a, a street wheel? It kind of depends on the budget because we got a lot of stuff we're going to be putting in this motorcycle that we'll be talking about today. So uh, potentially two sets of tires. This uh, passenger peg, apart from not being safe, is going to be replaced. There's heat shielding. You said there's like no heat shielding under here, right? Yeah, I don't see any heat shielding under there. When we buy a new exhaust system, it'll come with some aftermarket heat shielding that we'll be able to put in. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's cool, heat shielding will come. And by the way, we're gonna be doing full exhaust um, on this bike. Also, as you guys can probably tell, there's no lights in the back. So obviously for a bike to be street legal, there has to be lights in the front, lights in the back, winkers. So those are definitely some stuff we're gonna have to be doing. You guys tell me what you think is wrong with this, this view right here. Yup. So a set of rear sets is uh, definitely in the list as well as, look at that dude. What are you looking at? I am looking at the Scratchy McScratcher, son. The uh, scratched up cover. Yeah, so that whole cover gonna have to be replaced. The good news is, I don't think the other cover is bad, right? Nope, crashed on both sides. <clears throat> ah, dang. Okay, so uh, new engine covers, which is not a terrible idea. We, I think we end up doing that on almost every motorcycle yeah, because when a bike goes down, that's pretty much what happens. Yeah, those things are weak. It goes without saying, we're gonna do all new fluids and all that kind of stuff. Don't even have to get into the details of that. We talked that we said we are gonna do a new steering stabilizer. Uh, you know, I, I think we should. I really yeah. think we should. I mean, it, that uh, steering dampener works just fine for the street, but I think it may be lacking just a little bit for the racetrack. So right. I think we'll do a nice adjustable um, steering dampener that gotcha. you can, you know, dial up for the track, dial back for the street. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God ruining the lift as we speak. So as far as controls, uh, we're definitely gonna be doing new clip-ons. You guys can see we literally only have one freaking bar in. So uh, this one, oh, I'm, okay, I'm just gonna leave that. Lever's gonna be new. Uh, we also have throttle cables and clutch cable. Now you guys can see right there, somehow this boy done a flippy flip and got that all scraped up. Because these levers, you guys can probably see, like right here, 
Levers are scraped up, those will get replaced. Moving right along to uh, expensive things. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the CBR 600, but there's supposed to be a light right here. And it should look like that, so. Oh, good God. Yeah, yeah, not in great shape anyway. All right, so uh, new front housing's gonna go in, brand new headlights. Look at this little, um, we'll be able to keep a mouth, I guess. Okay, so new front housing. I, I don't think we're gonna have to get a new tack, right? It depends if all that stuff cleans up off of it. Yeah, I just moved my finger across it and nothing moved, so. If we can remove the grossness on that, we uh, will keep it. But if we can't, then it might have to go bye bye. And I think with Hondas, you can get pieces to their gauges. So we may not just be able to get a new oh. screen. We'll have to look into that a little bit further. Yeah. So everything we've described is basically getting this wrecked motorcycle to a point where it's a good street bike. But our goal with this motorcycle is not to build a street bike, it's to build a track bike. So all the guys and I were like, we're gonna make a, a race bike and that's only gonna be for the track only. And uh, turns out our Patreon people did not want that. So what we ended up doing, we had to go back to the drawing board, actual drawing board. So what things can we do in order to make this bike a street bike and a track bike? We want this thing to be a track bike. So the things we do to make it a track bike we replace the front housing, because obviously, if you guys aren't familiar with track bikes, front you have stay. front upper stay is the correct term to use. But with a track bike, if you're using uh, like a street bike, you typically have to tape up your front headlights. That's in case you fall or go down. You don't want stuff going. That's not why you tape them up. Why do you tape them up? You tape them up so the reflectors don't get anybody else's attention while they're riding. Is it not, because if you go down, this is gonna crack into pieces and it's gonna be all over the track? Yeah. Nope. I always thought so it was because it was easily either fragile. Your, either take your mirrors off or you cover them up. It's not because it's fragile, it's because they don't want any of that stuff reflecting and grabbing anybody else's attention while they're trying to focus on riding. The only thing they don't want hitting the track is fluid. Yes. I was this many years old when I found mean, that out. Let me know in the comments if you thought you taped your headlights up to do a track day so that it wouldn't, like the fragile pieces wouldn't fall all over the ground and if you just learned something. I will be interested to see how many people thought what I thought. We're gonna have a new race upper stay, which is not going to have a housing for the headlights or anything like that. So, Brian, you were saying this area is gonna look kinda hollowy with the race upper stay on. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that's gonna be there is the, um, the speedo or the gauge cluster the tip over sensor that is mounted right there and the ram air duct for the intake. So um, when you're sitting on the bike looking down at the cluster, it's kind of just like a big hollow right. kind of bucket in the front that you'll be staring down. It's a very different look. Yeah, so that's gonna be cool to check out. Um, so obviously, without with that being said, there's also gonna be a race set of fairings we're gonna have for this bike as well. The seat is going to be basically a piece of black cardboard uh, because that's what race seats are and you don't really have to have a seat if you're gonna be trying to go fast, fast on a track track. So. <laughs> you also don't need that, that super heavy rear subframe that's strong enough to hold two people. Oh, convenient that you just mentioned the subframe, Brian, because we will also be having a race subframe. As you guys can tell, the process of moving this motorcycle from track to street is going to be pretty intensive. So we've already planned on towards the end of the season, we're gonna have to do a video on how to take this thing from track to street, street to track. So it's gonna be like, we're seriously doing a bike and a half. Yeah, we'll do a, like, there's gonna be a step-by-step like step for this motorcycle. <laughs> no, yeah, and it's gonna, it's, we're gonna be making two videos for literally one person. Can we do it like, uh, like one of the videos that they would play you when you get a new job at like Eckerd's? So as far as, oh, so we're also gonna do fasteners, Zeus fasteners? I've never heard of the word Zeus fasteners, maybe you guys have, but they're basically, Instead of having to put fairings on and screw them on a million times, there's these like quarter turn? Either quarter or half turn. Quarter or half turn and a bolt will go in and lock in. As you guys know, we always, I think we've- We always do a chain and Yeah, I don't think we've ever not. So we're definitely gonna be changing out the chain and sprockets, but a cool thing that we can do uh, is give the person that wins the motorcycle two sets of sprockets. So that way, if you're on a bigger track and you got a higher top speed situation, you can put on, for lack of a better term, your top speed sprock. 
tickets. I'm guessing that's a delivery guy. Okay. <laughs> I fucking knew it. I were sitting over there. I could see it. I was like, I heard that and I'm like, Brian's already here. He's the only person that knocks on the garage door. But yeah, so then if you go to like a shorter track and you don't have that top speed availability at the track, you can put on the shorter uh, set of sprockets. So yeah, ideally we would love to make this to where, you know, the person gets this like half other motorcycle at the end of it where they can ride it on the street however they want and then it can be ridden on the track. The suspension is one of the areas that typically you guys have seen the builds we do. We typically put high level suspension on there. As you can also see, the list of stuff we are doing on this motorcycle is extensive. So what we're gonna do is instead of doing brand new forks and a, a rear shock, we are going to just change the internals instead of... of the front, the rear is gonna have to be completely Right, so, well, okay, so yeah, we, we don't have to buy the most expensive rear shock that is out there in order to get a better shock for the rear of the motorcycle. The front, we talked about changing the internals instead of the entire uh, fork, which is, I think, a pretty cool way because I'll we'll get to walk through the process of doing that. It can save you some money. Was that not your Uber guy? Oh, it was. You're eating things. Okay, I didn't see. Okay, all right, dog. So yeah, with all the stuff we're doing on this motorcycle, we not that we're cutting corners, but we gotta maintain budget somehow. So with doing a bike and a half, that's one of the things that we're gonna have to do. Yeah, it's not that big of a compromise, but it is gonna save us some cash as far as the entire build. I know a lot of you guys have commented, you guys want us to do build budgets per bike. We, we did that a lot of the way through the Panigale. We can try to do it on these builds because I'm very interested to see if the 600 ends up costing more than the 1000s. Actually, that, saying that, that makes me really want to do the build budgets for each bike. Because I think the 300 is going to come in pretty cheap, but look crazy different. Yeah. So another cool thing I'm excited for for this build is, uh, I've done track days before. I had an R6 for, for forever, it seems like. And every track day I did with my R6, I would always go ride the bike, and then I'm on the track, I'm there to ride the bike hard, but I'm also in the back of my head like, Man, I really, I don't want to wreck my freaking pretty bike that I want to ride on the street. So one of the things I was telling the guys when we decided we're going to do this kind of street bike, track bike situation was somebody's going to be able to take this motorcycle to a track. You're going to have track fairings, a track subframe, a track upper stay, and God forbid something goes down. We're going to have crash protection all over the motorcycle, but let's just say you go down and you just totally gnarly mess up the race fairings on the left side. When you take your bike home, you can put all your street stuff on and nothing is wrong. I think it's gonna offer an opportunity for the person that wins it to really be able to actually take advantage of it being a track bike without having that back of the mind worry that you're gonna mess up like, if this is the only bike the person had, they're gonna have the ability to kind of like change it back and forth, not have to worry about it as much, which in my head would ideally make them enable to uh, enjoy the track a lot more than they otherwise would be. I think that's everything. Did I? I think that's everything. Yeah, I think. We're going to upgrade our street machine to to pretty much track levels. And we're going to wrap it in street clothes. And then we're going to uh, send along with the machine all the race clothing to be swapped out into uh, along with some other parts. So if you go down on the track, you bend a foot peg, you twist up the subframe, and you break the front upper stay. You go home, you take all the race stuff off, you put all the street stuff back on, you buy a foot peg and you're ready to roll. This bike is going to be a really unique uh, machine that we're building so that they can, you know, it can really do its job in all its uh, different ways. So I think that's all I got, ladies and gentlemen. That is our 2008 CBR 600 RR. That will be a, err. It's gonna be a lot of different things. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below. <laughs> I'm cutting that. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys i'm chase on two wheels thank you guys so much for watching especially getting to the end of the video if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more motorcycle content if you guys want to see more in-depth videos or win the motorcycles that we're building all of that stuff is the top link down below it will take you to wreck bike rebuild garage patreon that is how you can support the show support what we do here and help us make even cooler motorcycles outro crew let's make it easy
if you won the motorcycle, if you're over there on Patreon, you're supporting, and uh, you got an email from me, it's like, hey, bro, congrats, you won the motorcycle. What way would you want us to deliver it to you? Race mode or street mode? Let us know in the comments down below. You guys know I love you a long time for getting to the end of the video. I'm gone. I'm gonna give you, how's this bow? How's this little editing bow? How do you like this? Just, I know where it is, I can cut it out. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, goodbye.